Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is my regular monthly Everything in Bloom on the 8th video. And um, it's going to be a bit thin on the ground. <laughs> and thinking ahead, like one does when one grows things like orchids, I think next month's going to be even worse. If you think about most of what's in bloom now may well have gone over by the 8th of the September and there's not a huge amount coming along to take its place at the moment. It is just a quiet time of year. Yes, what can we do for you? <laughs> now you're right in the way now, aren't you? Ugh, nuisance cat. <laughs> uh, right, um, I'll start off with this Bulbophyllum della Tescans. Now the main bloom, which was quite beautiful, has actually gone now. Those, those um, little bloomettes or whatever you want to call them, the individual parts of the bloom, um, dropped off a couple of days ago, literally overnight, they just all fell. Um, this weaker spike has only produced three, uh, I think the other one had probably nine or ten, um, but this one opened a bit later. I don't think this is going to last a huge amount of time, um, but they're quite attractive. Um, no stinky either, they, uh, if they've got a fragrance I can't tell. So, uh, you know, a sort of a, a no fragrance one. Um, right, coming round here, the um, Kiki Comet King Bloom is still hanging in there, still looking good. Um, it's been open uh, over a month now, so I don't think it's going to be much longer for this world. Um, in amongst the nobly types, this is one of my favourites. I, I can see now I'm holding the bloom up, it is fading, so it's not going to be around too much longer. Um, when it first opens, the purple is deeper and the yellow is brighter in the lip. Um, it is one of the nicer noblies and large. You know, as nobly blooms go, these are large blooms compared with some. Um, now, this is a surprise. Um, this is Miltoniopsis, has it got a name? Yes, this is Junette, and this is a strange one because I'd bought this as a yellow Miltoniopsis, and when it arrived it was in bloom, and the blooms were a pale yellow, and within a few days they turned a creamy colour, and then they turned white. Now this has been open a long time, and in this heat I'm really surprised these blooms have lasted, but they have. They've hung in there, and this time on these blooms they're keeping their yellow. It has faded, it is a paler yellow now than when it opened, but nonetheless you'd still say that is a yellowish bloom. So I'm well pleased because I thought I'd bought one that was um, never going to do what I'd expected of it and be yellow. Um, but anyway, they're, they're lasting and that I am surprised at. Um, very surprised in this heat. Um, the Infundibulum cross, this is Dendrobium, Infundibulum cross with Lowy eye. Um, one bloom's gone. Now they only opened a few days apart, so again, this one's going to be gone very soon now. But at the moment, it's still looking good. Um, the camera won't do this justice because um, cameras play with pure white. They, tr they try and seem to find some colour there somewhere. <laughs> and if they can't find it, they add a bit in. But this is the purest of whites. It really is the purest white I've got in the grow room. And with that um, veining and deep gold yellow in the lip, it's, it's quite a striking contrast, the two colours together. Um, now this is one of the black hair types. So um, the canes look odd but they're absolutely smothered in the tiniest black hairs and they, they give it a, almost a purple tinge when the canes are new anyway. Um, and it blooms out of the top of the cane, um, so obviously I'm now waiting for some new canes to grow before this can bloom again. And this needs repotting. Um, it hasn't been repotted since I got it, but it came from one of the um, Orchid Society members that I know well. And I know he grows these sort of plants in a very gritty mix. So it's a sort of a mix of bark and grit, literally. So it's a very open mix and probably wouldn't break down very quickly as a consequence. So it, that's why I wasn't particularly worried to drag it out of its pot immediately. But it does need repotting now. Um, the Spring Dream of Pollen blooms are still okay. Um, well out of season for a nobly. Um, so it certainly won't bloom again now and I still don't think I've got any new growths coming on this yet 
I mean, it's had a hell of a disturbance. It was, you know, split off of a large plant. Um, so it'll take a while to get going again now, but uh, hopefully it will grow on some uh, new growth soon. They will be out of season if they start now, because they should have started back in the spring. So they should have had the whole growing season to mature. But um, effectively, if it does push out some new growths now, it won't get rested. It'll get, it'll get watered and fed through the winter time and grown on just to keep the canes going. And um, I'll worry about it getting back into, you know, the way it ought to be next winter. So uh, I'd rather just grow it at the moment. But blooms are nice. Um, very little pink this time. And I think it's... Um, it never sort of stated emphatically as a fact, <laughs> but um, I think that heat and probably light intensity has an effect on colours. Um, the colours on the Spring Dreamer pollen in the spring had a much deeper depth of colour in the lip, which is virtually non-existent on these, and lovely pink tinges noticeable pink tinges on the tips of the petals and sepals whereas these are almost pure white um, and they've opened in the heat and the long days and the bright light so maybe the the light does have an effect on the absolute color of blooms um, the dendrobium hibiki is lasting well i do notice that the um the blooms down here that opened a lot later they've got the heat damage on them They've suffered, so these blooms opened before it got bad, or before it had been going on so long, let's put it that way. Um, and I'm pleased that they've lasted, very pleased. I mean, when I got this plant, I knew I liked the blooms, but I had no idea that they would last so long. And in the dendrobium world, long-lasting blooms are a bit thin on the ground. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of people that have possibly just grown Phalaenopsis in their lives, um, and, and you know they're used to the longevity of those blooms and then they venture out into m to some other sorts of um, orchids and wonder why the blooms only last two weeks so that, that's just the way it is some orchids have very short-lived blooms um, but this this has done really well it's a lovely combination of colors and not a typical shaped dendrobium either and blooms in clusters uh, that does occur on quite a few dendrobiums but uh, yeah I'm well pleased with that um, let me see <laughs> not much more um, the catatanti is going that that's suffered heat damage quite badly um, but nonetheless it's still got a few blooms not many they're, they're virtually all going now and I think probably for the sake of the plant I really ought to take that spike off now it's not looking good anymore You've got blooms that are literally about to drop and um, there's 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 not a good bloom left on there it's just wilted and well it's effectively dehydrated in the heat um, if I could have kept my humidity at you know 70 percent at 31 32 degrees they'd have probably hung in there but when the heat gets that high in here I can't keep the humidity as high as I'd like so they've suffered um, the Miltonia Sunset uh, is doing well. Um, two blooms on here, uh, sorry, two spikes on here. These are lasting okay. These don't seem to be suffering. They're, they're lasting very well. And um, I think this was the first spike to open and these are just, just showing signs. They lose their coloring. Uh, uh, as they go over as, as you can see all the purple's gone off of some of these so this spike will go soon this one will last a bit longer it opened about a week later and I've just noticed up the back there the other little spike has just opened as well that's only got a couple of buds on that that spike that's a weak spike but the other two were good spikes they, they've lasted well um, this has gone now the alicera the last bloom that will fall off today um, Peter Comp this is um, just starting to go on this spike. It's, it's uh, losing its first bloom completely and the blooms are fading. But up in the greenery, up the back, the other spike is just starting to open. So um, I, I, when I water these later, oh, it's actually got another spike coming as well. I hadn't noticed that. So that pseudo bulbs pushed two spikes out, one each side. The, the one that's just opened a bloom and this one here. So we now have... Uh, 
you know, a succession of blooms on that. So Peter Comp will be around a while. Very fragrant, that one. I like that one a lot. Um, there's no Restrepia blooms at the moment. They really are sulking in the heat. Um, my Miltonia. This is Queen Anne, so a, a hybrid, effectively. Um, this is the one with the uh, multicoloured blooms, if I can just turn it round a bit so that we can see them. Um, uh, I would say that the typical blooms on this are the deep purple with the veining on the lip. But it has produced one bloom. Ah, it's changed. This bloom, when it opened, had white on the lip. That white has now turned a lovely lilac colour. So it's lost its white. So that was only there for a week or so. Um, and I've still got some more buds to come on this. Um, these spikes are growing a little unusual, um, but this is a first time bloomer, so it's the first time I've seen it go. And it, it doesn't seem to grow like a lot of these types of spikes in the Oncidium Alliance, where the buds push on and they open from the base of the spike towards the tip, but quite quickly. Whereas this one has still got buds just starting which implies it's going to be in bloom a very long time. You know, like one after the other. Um, on this spike, we've got one bloom open, and um, I mean the other, the other two, two buds are nowhere near opening. They haven't even got their colour yet. So I think this is going to have a succession of blooms um, over quite a long period, which, it, which is a nice trait. Mass bloomings are all very well, but when your blooms are a bit thin on the ground, <laughs> having one after the other is, is, is not bad. Um, and that really is it, apart from my um, Phalaenopsis Sweet Memory, which has dropped a bloom, um, but it still has two. Oh, I have to get right down on the floor for this one. Um, they're not going to be around too much longer because all three of them opened very close together. Um, the middle one dropped yesterday or the day before, um, so we're on the last two now. This is fragrant, um, but you know, when you hear about it and hear it described by nurseries and things, you'd think that it would fill the grow room. It doesn't. You've got to get quite close to this to get the uh, fragrance. It is there and it is very pleasant, but it, but it's not a strong fragrance, not in compared with others anyway. So two blooms left on there. Um, this spike has uh, extended and now branched. Um, so this bloom is on the main spike extension. Um, this is a branch and this is a branch and it, all of the parts of this spike look like they may well extend a little more you know so there may be some more blooms down the line um, and that is it so really short and sweet this time I mean there are there's some catlia buds doing well I'll, I'll, I don't normally do this on my everything in bloom but <laughs> as it's a bit short we've got a very large catlia bud coming up there out the top of that sheath but I, I mentioned the fact that it's bud well that'll be its first time bloom for me um, but a single bud on a cattleya that doesn't have the massive blooms you know the one six inches across is a bit unusual um, a lot of my cattleyas are going to bloom you know as we head into winter I think you know they're all pushing on into that position where the new growths are maturing and um, you know the buds are uh, the sheaths and things are starting to form, so they'll come later down the line. So, uh, short and sweet this time. I can remember some of my everything in blooms was half an hour long. <laughs> Try to get them all in. I haven't missed anything this time. <laughs> when there's so little, it's uh, uh, not so easy to miss something like I have done in the past. So, uh, yeah, short and sweet. That's, that's just the way it is, talking to other growers. Um, there's an awful lot of people have lost blooms, had buds blast and all sorts of things with this heat. Um, so it's, uh, it's affecting, you know, a lot of people, it's not just me. Um, but it looks like it's over for a bit now. The sky at the moment is totally overcast, not a bit of blue anywhere. And oh, it was quite pleasant this morning. I walked out in the garden with my coffee and it was cool. <laughs> First time I've fe felt cool for a very long time. So it's a pleasant change. Everybody will start moaning that it's, uh, oh, it's all miserable now in the middle of summer. Yeah. Never happy with the weather in this country. <laughs> I think it's really because it's so changeable. It, it never remains constant. It's always on the change, so it's like a talking subject. But I'm sure some people get fed up with hearing about it. Uh, 
Anyway, we get what we're given and we live with it. So, uh, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. If you're going to miss something, don't miss one of your favourite blooms. Ugh. This is Dendrobium um, Hercoglossum. It's having a little uh, late flurry. I mean, this is a sort of um, early spring bloomer under normal circumstances, or well into the spring. Um, it's not an early, late winter, early spring bloomer. It is a bit later than other Dendrobiums, but uh, yeah, this um, camera cannot capture this properly. It needs incredibly bright light above it and it has to be viewed from underneath to see its delicacy. It's virtually transparent and under those lighting conditions it glows. Um, it's still one of my favourites. Um, <clears throat> I think all the late buds are now open. This, uh, this lot over here are going. Um, they're not lasting as well as they would do earlier in the year and I think that is the the last of these blooms, but oh, I, I walked under it, I walked round it, I, I, you know, <laughs> and missed it. And um, although these aren't large blooms, they, you know, um, it does do quite a mass blooming every year and has done for many years. Um, I've had this plant a really long time. Um, we did actually remount it a while ago. Um, the wood was breaking down the mount that it was on and it was taking out the roots at the back of the plant before they could grow so it was taken off and remounted and you can see roots are now pushing out um, and underneath I can see they are growing if I turn the plant upside down and um, new growth pushing on so I mean it's coming on um, it will slow a little because of its disturbance so I might not get such long canes this time round but um, uh, and this is a strange growing dendrobium. Um, it's unlike any other I've got, and I can say that, you know, really. I've had it long enough now. And unlike many other dendrobiums that have an annual cycle, and some have a two-year cycle before they drop their leaves, this has got a three-year-plus cycle on it. So normally, quite early in the year, the new growth start and they, they push on during the growing season. They carry on growing through the winter into the next year where they start getting heavy enough to pull down. Um, and they may bloom, depending on how large they've got. And then they'll push on growing through their second season and they'll carry on growing through their second winter on into the third season. You know, by the time, you know, and, and then they are long. Um, I was just going to try and find some, I mean, here's a long cane. Um, it's, it's still growing. It's, it's still producing leaves. It's still extending. So this, win this does not get a winter rest at all. Um, it doesn't get absolutely drowned through the winter because obviously with the short days it won't be growing as fast. But it doesn't stop growing in the winter. It carries on. And I've seen this noted in places that it's classed as a winter resting type and water should be withheld. Well, if you've got actively growing canes trying to push out new leaves, I don't think holding the water back is going to do it a huge amount of good. I mean, you can see the canes are still growing. So uh, it is an unusual one. And each cane can bloom at least twice and sometimes three times. Yeah, so its initial set of blooms in its first season where it's large enough will come out, sort of spring, and then you may get an odd flurry through the year where you get a few extra ones, little bonuses. Um, and then the following year, that cane will bloom again in the places it didn't bloom before. Yeah, and then the following year, which is in fact the third year, you can still get a few blooms if there's any spaces left on the cane that haven't bloomed. But eventually, the cane will completely drop its leaves and become totally deciduous. But it's a quite a long process. Um, so it has an unusual growth pattern, that one. Consequently, gets treated, I'd say, differently to anything else I've got. Because I keep it going through the winter as best I can. <clears throat> just, it just continuously grows. And when it's in a mass blooming, it's a, a stunning dendrobium. No fragrance, but... Uh, yeah, beautiful blooms. How can you walk past that and forget that one? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> See you next time.